Good morning, brothers. Today we have a memorial of beheading of St. John the Baptist, and I thought it was a great, perfect match with what I'm going to reflect on our Constitution about our life of prayers, sacrifice, and fraternity. When I firstly joined this order, Brother David Nessler was our provincial. He always reminded brothers to pray, and prayer is the center of our life. But what is prayer and how to pray? I have to confess that I did not fully understand. This past summer, I was assigned to Cleveland, and my supervisor was Brother David Nessler. So I thought it was perfect opportunity for me to watch how he led a prayerful or prayer-centered life in the friary and in the church. He, he was a great supervisor. He never gave me heavy load. So I have plenty of time to rest and to pray. So, and he reminded, he reminded me to pray. Um, after work, we pray office hours. That is a moment we can set apart our hearts from daily life and reflect on God's presence in everything we do and think. Isn't it nice to pray? Such beautiful and peaceful prayer-centered life continued until July the 10th. On that day, Father David, as usual, led the prisoners, Holy Spirit prisoners, to have regular Wednesday 6.30 p.m. Mass. During the Mass, he invited parishioners to surround the altar while he was saying Eucharist prayer. He raised up the chalice and said the doxology through him, in him, and with him. And he put down the chalice and he collapsed on the floor. Time froze. Everyone was shocked. Then we immediately surround him. Someone brought water and put the wet towel on him, on his forehead. They thought he, you know, because of overheat and dehydration, he, he fainted. And we keep calling Brother David's name. His eye opened, but seemed he, could, he was not able to see anything. And then he regained consciousness and started to talk gently. He had two sips of water while I held, held up his hand. And then he asked us to hold up his hand and say our father while he was lying on the floor. Then he lost his consciousness again. We keep calling his name. He slowly regained his consciousness and responded and said his name and, and, and uh, date of birth with weak voice. Then he continued to say Eucharist prayer and invited us to pray Lamb of God. After that, he was exhausted, but he smiled on the floor. Ambulance finally came, arrived, and two medics moved him into the ambulance. They didn't leave right, of, right away, but gave him resuscitating shots and IV. As I was told, Brother David's blood pressure was critically low. He finally was sent to the local hospital emergency room. Doctor checked his EKG, and they were not happy about the result. They caught life, life flight. Brother Bob Marva arrived soon, and so deacons and some prisoners. We surrounded him while Bob Marva gave him anointing. He was shaking. Several min minutes later, helicopter landed and medics moved Brother David quickly to the main campus of Cle Cleveland Clinic. I have to drive from local emergency room to the main campus. On the road, on the way to the clinic, I began to cry. On one hand, that moment in the emergency room triggered my memory. Last summer, when Saul was anointed by Brother Bill and then lived up by the helicopter, 
On the other hand, when he never come back. On the other hand, the most striking thing for me was that Brother David fainted twice, and some parishioners said three times, beside the altar. As soon as he regained the consciousness, he urged us to help him to complete the Eucharist prayer. His life was at stake because we thought he had stroke. But he was concerned more of completing the sacrifice on the altar and offering it to God the Father. I have to confess I'm a poor student in theology and I couldn't fully understand what happens on the altar while the, while the priest is offering the sacrifice. But now the holy drama was being clearly demonstrated in front of my eyes. A priest is offering his life together with the sacrifice of the prisoners, united with the living sacrifice of Jesus Christ to God the Father. The priest is being configured into the person of Christ. Almighty Father is so pleased with the sacrifice and he transformed the Eucharist into living bread, nourish, nourishing our life until eternity. Our Constitution says, as we respond in prayer to God, who speaks to us, we become fully ourselves by leaving self-love <coughs> behind, and in communion with God and with people, we pass over into Christ who is both God and man. For Christ himself is our life, our prayer, and our activity. Without Christ, our prayer is nothing. With Christ, our prayer is alive. Interestingly, when I reported what happened to Brother Frank Jacobi, he responded, he was really very moved. However, he was not sure whether to send my account to brothers, as he knew for a fact that David would be embarrassed at any account of his priestly heroism. He was quite sure that David simply feel that he was doing his duty as, as best he could, under the circumstances. Such is a brother who always hiding under the wing of Christ and would never steal the glory of God. Two days later, he was discharged from hospital and started his daily life and the ministry as usual. If I didn't mention he was our previous provincial, none of the parishioners would know he was in such a high position and was highly respected by the brothers. Sometimes how much I wish Brother David be a highly gifted musician or accomplished athlete or powerful charismatic preacher, but he is none of those. On the contrary, he seems the weakest among the brothers, among the people, and always wants to confirm other brothers, other people to be accomplished and to be successful leader. On Brother David's office wall hangs another brother's picture. His name is Mal Smith. I don't know if I pronounced correct. David told me. Miles suffered bone deformation greatly in the last 10 years of his life. But his smile on that picture seemed to detach himself from the acute physical pain. What brought him genuine joy? A line was inscribed be beside his picture. A man may add many inches to his statue, and became the and uh, simply by not taking thought of himself. A man may add many inches to his statue simply by not taking thought of himself. Isn't it a portrait of Christ 
who emptied himself and became the lowest servant. Because of these humble and prayerful brothers' examples, I discovered that to be an authentic prayerful brother is not a myth anymore. Prayer is indeed the center of our life. Dear brothers, Saint John the Baptist became the protomartyr proto of our Christian faith. Let us offer our life as a living sacrifice in serving each other.